So I like video games. They're cool and fun and lead to stories that couldn't be told in any other medium. I also like musicals, another form of storytelling that leads to fun and emotional songs and some nice tunes. So what would happen if you combined the two? Well, you would get video game musicals. Musicals based off of video games. Some are good, some are bad, some are in Japanese, and some have Markiplier. So in no particular order, I I'm gonna talk about them. One of my favorite games of all time is Portal 2. The characters, the puzzles, the humor, the environment, the spectacle, it's all perfected and I replayed it multiple times. So clearly, it should be a musical. Clearly. Portal 2 The Unauthorized Musical is a musical based off of Portal 2 made by Geek Enders. They make musicals like A Nude Hope, a sci-fi burlesque adventure. So what's the story? It's Portal 2. It's an adaptation of Portal 2. It's the same story. The stuff they took from Valve is good. The original stuff is bad. <laughs> For example, as part of the musical, they expanded the parts of the Space Corps, the Adventure Corps, and Fact Corps, and they have them talk in the limelight. Here is a joke from Portal 2. Okay, listen, let me lay something on you here. It's pretty heavy. They told me never, never, ever to disengage myself from my management rail or I would die. But we're out of options here. So get ready to catch me, all right, on the off chance that I'm not dead the moment I pop off this thing. On three. Ready? One. Two. Three! That's high. It's, w it's too high, isn't it, really, that? All right, going on three just gives you too much time to think about it. Let's uh, go on one this time. Okay, ready? One. Catch me, catch Ow. Ow. I am not dead! I'm not dead! <laughs> the same joke is extended to over three minutes in the musical because the cores need their dialogue. The pacing just sucks. When GLaDOS is a potato, they have the actors on stage puppet her when she talks. This is funny, I'll give them that one. They expanded on Cave Johnson's story. We see him and Caroline's exploits in early Aperture, and it's a change that works in the context of a musical. It's probably the only good change they made to this story, though it still sucks. Let's do some science and make Aperture great again! But it also leads to a weird change, where Cave Johnson tries to sell the portal gun to Black Mesa in the lore. Ooh. Cave Johnson held off from selling the portal gun because he thought there was more that could have been done. Black Mesa can eat my bankrupt- Sir, the testing? So in no way would he have tried to sell it to Black Mesa. My Cave Johnson would never. In the musical, they claim that the reason he hates Black Mesa is because they wouldn't buy his portal gun. I hate this musical so much. Remember the cores? They're also in early Aperture. Yay. The heavens have opened it up and an angel has fallen out to walk among us. They're here as people, which I don't think is canonical. Cho might be one of the most interesting changes. Obviously, you can't have the main character of a musical have no discernible personality. That's understandable. But she ranges from being a bitch to being pathetic, which she probably would only be a non-caring bitch, to be honest. But they also make her talk. She says, Apple. Apple. This is terrible. This is awful. This is a tragedy. How could they do this to me? She does also sing in the musical. I actually hate her singing in the musical. Not the actress, says, but the character Chell singing. At first, it doesn't seem that bad. Like, oh, it would make sense for her to sing. It is musical. No, I hate it. She shouldn't. In my opinion, she's a worse character for singing. And it leads to this moment. Let's just Chell breaks the laws of nature in order to sing a song about testing that is a parody of a Mary Poppins song. Yay. There are three types of musicals. Original musicals, one made up of all original music, which are the best. Jukebox musicals, ones that take licensed music in place of original music. And parody musicals, musicals composed of licensed music but has original lyrics. And this unauthorized musical is one of those. There is this saying that I heard. 
I think it's from Bob Fosse or Sideways, both of them are equally plausible. You sing when emotions are too strong to talk, and you dance when emotions are too strong to sing. The best musicals have characters sing at pivotal character moments with songs perfectly crafted for that moment. Jukebox and parody musicals don't have that luxury, which automatically makes them worse. A majority of the songs are parodies of other musicals, like the opening, Good Morning Aperture, is a parody of Good Morning Baltimore from Hairspray. There are a couple songs that I would call, There's no story here, how can we fill the void, songs. Under Attack, which is just Under Attack by ABBA, Why Can't the Subjects Learn Their Test Initiatives, a parody of Why Can't the English from My Fair Lady, where Chell talks, and Suddenly Wheatley, a parody of Suddenly Seymour from Little Shop of Horrors, where Wheatley has to give Chell a pep song because she's sad from GLaDOS being a bitch. Oh, boo hoo. Wheatley gets a villain song, Running the Whole Machine, a parody of Friends on the Other Side, which I think is the worst parody out of all of them. Running the Machine is supposed to be an intimidation song. Wheatley is in control. Oh no. And he might murder Chell. Oh no. But friends on the other side is Dr. Fassier trying to convince the boys to make a deal and do some voodoo. It's a completely different type of villain song. One is supposed to be intimidating, and the other is supposed to be charismatic. Running the whole machine just falls flat. Kate Johnson has a couple songs. Mr. Johnson, a parody of Mr. Cladwell from Urinetown. Trouble, a parody of Ya Got Trouble from The Music Man, where Cave Johnson commits a cardinal sin by attempting to sell the portal gun to Black Mesa. And If You Could See You, a parody of If You Could See Her from Cabaret, where Cave Johnson forces Caroline into a robot, turning her into GLaDOS. Speaking of GLaDOS, her songs... Carol <laughs> exist. I'm Alive is a parody of I'm Alive from Next to Normal, where she's alive. Poor Unfortunate Subjects, Poor Unfortunate Souls, and Want You Gone, taken straight from the game. She's not the best at singing, but it's even worse comparing it to the original, being that Ellen McLean, the voice actress for GLaDOS, is an opera singer. Chell has one song, which is one song too many. It's A Quick Pair of Portals, which is a spoonful of sugar from Mary Poppins. And the closing song starts as the turret opera from the game, but then becomes Do You Hear the Turret Sing, a parody of Do You Hear the People Sing from The Miserables. Overall, most of the songs suck. But what about the choreography? Choreography sucks. Th that's it. I'm not a choreographer, but everything looks really amateur and stale. The costume design is really nice. The humans look like humans, but the non-human characters had to have original costumes, and they're all really nice. The turrets have a ring to replicate the eyes, the cores have the costumes based off their personalities, with the original core design on their heads, GLaDOS wears a corset and some less than kinky boots. The acting and singing is also good enough, though it has nothing on the original performances. GLaDOS is like, kinda bad. She's oddly sensual, which wasn't what the original was. She's trying to replicate the robotic voice of GLaDOS in the game, but in real time and without a filter, so instead of sounding robotic, it sounds like this. It's been a long time. Wait, you know her? How have you been? I've been really, really busy being dead. You know, after you murdered me. You did what? Ah! Okay, I'm willing to put all this behind us and get back to work. For science. And it sucks. Wheatley's actor is actually pretty good in this. Cave Johnson's actor also does a good job, though it's nothing compared to J.K. Simmons' performance. So Portal 2 is a video game that really works as a video game, specifically with the portal gun. How do they make this work on stage? They have two actors play Chell. Good idea. Definitely won't lead to anything weird happening, like breaking the laws of nature, nope, no siree. Man, I wonder if any other indie musical production companies have made unauthorized musicals based off of video games. Team Starkid makes musicals, and all are very funny. They've made some great works, but one that typically goes under the radar is their musical, The Trail to Oregon, a musical based off the game, The Oregon Trail. It isn't my favorite Starkid musical, but it's definitely better than the other option. For one, it's entirely original, other than the concept. The story is Jack Bauer and his family of farmers try to go to Oregon, and along the way, they face marriage troubles, child bride abductions, and dysentery. 
all good things, all good things. It's significantly funnier than the Portal 2 musical, mainly because it's its own thing and not in the shadow of what can be considered one of the best games of all time. So since it has original music, is it good? Yeah, I like Independence, the song introducing the first town, The Wagon is on Fire, where the wagon is set on fire by McDoon, the Bandit King. Oh, he's such a bad boy with his child bride. And Speedrun, where they speedrun the rest of the game. The choreography is also actually good, like professionals did it. The characters are very good, all the performances are excellent, they make the jokes really work, even when they don't quite land. Some of their jokes are actually like really clever, and they reference parts of the game, like how you get to choose the name of your family, and how that usually leads to weird names. What would you like to name our lovely grandpa? <laughs> Get her, Minnie. What was that? What was that? Titty Mitty. How do you feel about that, Grandma? I like that name. Yeah. Like it a lot. The pacing is significantly better. I just have to say that because Portal 2, the unauthorized musical's pacing, really sucks. If you haven't seen this before, definitely watch it. It's actually very good. I don't have much to say because it's easier to complain than it is to praise. So at the end of the musical, you have the option to choose who gets to die of dysentery. And you know what else is a choose your own adventure? Markiplier's YouTube Originals. So let's look at a musical with Markiplier. So the FNAF musical is a collection of videos made by Random Encounters, which are responsible for a lot of fan video game musicals. They specifically have a song for each night in the Five Nights of Freddington's. The first song is loosely based off of the first game, the second song, the second game, third, third, fourth, fourth, and the fifth night isn't based off the fifth game, Sister Location, and instead wholly original. The plot follows Markiplier, the king of Five Nights at Frederick's, as he plays Five Nights at Ferdinand von Ayers. He is the security guard the first night, a murderer the second night. Then he got arrested, but he escaped. So an old hire has to be brought back, Nathan Sharp from Nate Wants a Battle, as he plays through the third game. Spring, spring trap is here? So he needs more hands. So him and the Fred characters invade houses in the fourth game. But the crying kid is Markiplier, and also a robot, and also is Ness. Then they go and beat up Springtrap the fifth night, where Purple Guy reveals he tried to murder everyone with Springtrap because he wants more hours, and Map Hat reveals he is Phone Guy, and also Scott Coffin, and also a guy with a chainsaw, and also a guy on fire, and also burns himself alive. The plot is a little weird, trying to combine all the games into one plot where the games are non-sequential, but it's fun and does a good job. The videos are clearly low budget, but it's shot and edited and and performed in such a way where you forget that and just have a good time. Even though it's low budget, they have all the mainstays. Freddy, Chica, Foxy, Bonnie, Springtrap, Purple Guy, and Markiplier. I can't really say they act differently from the games because they aren't really characters in the games, at least the earlier ones. You've got Phone Guy, and that's it. The animatronics in this are friendly and stupid and don't want to kill Markiplier. Completely inaccurate, unwatchable garbage. All the songs and performances are super fun, and they incorporate mechanics from the games into the songs. You can tell that they had a lot of fun making this. Also, they have Xander Mobus, the voice of Joker from Persona 5, as Freddy. That's awesome. But that's not the only musical that Random Encounters made. They also made one based off of Ace Attorney. The Turnabout Encounter is their Ace Attorney musical. It's an original case based off of the franchise. Maya may or may not have murdered Larry Butts by pushing him off a hospital. And Phoenix needs to prove her innocence. In terms of being faithful to the original source material, this one does the best. The entire video is stylized to look like the actual game. I'm gonna show you two things. One is from the game, one is from the musical. Which one is it? Wrong. They're both from the movie. The setting, the costumes, they even put subtitles in the style of the text boxes from the original games. The only issue is because of that, there isn't really anything interesting going on. Like, they're all just sort of standing there menacingly. The editing saves it from getting boring. So the music is decent enough. I like Turnabout the best. It's got three choruses intersecting. You gotta love it when that happens. God, the Portal 2 musical sucks. Their performances are also pretty good. They do a successful job at making the characters really feel like their game counterparts. But Ace Attorney is vastly popular in Japan. They have the games, the anime, a live-action movie, and a stage musical. 
Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, The Truth Reborn is actually one of three Ace Attorney musicals performed by Takarazuka Review, an all-female musical theater company, which is pretty cool. The only issue is when the male characters sing, the songs seem to have been written for a lower voice, baritone I think? I don't know, it just sounds a little off to me and I would have preferred that they just sang closer to their range than having them deepen their voices like that. The musical is based off of the case Rise from the Ashes, the secret fifth case from the first game. Phoenix's long lost lover from California may or may not have done did a murder, and Phoenix has to prove she may not have done did the crime. They also changed some of the characters. Instead of Emma and Lana Skye, it's Leona Clyde, and also Maya and Larry are here. So say hi. Hello. Also, it's a senator being killed instead of a detective. So they use the English names for the characters, which is only weird because their names aren't the same in Japanese, and this was only performed in Japan. However, the version re-uploaded to YouTube does have the English subtitles, but this was a fan translation. The second musical is also available with English subtitles. The dancing looks professional and the singing is also good. My favorite song is My Rule, Edgeworth's introduction song. It's a nice sounding song and it has some excellent dancing. So many Edgeworths are just here, they're just vibing, they're just grooving. The costumes are pretty accurate to the games. We look at the bottom first, and yep, as we're going up, we see that it's completely accurate to the games. We definitely see their legs in the games, they're definitely not cut off like halfway down, so it's obviously accurate. So we look at the torsos now, and those are all very accurate to the game. And then we look further up at the most iconic feature, the hair. And Phoenix's hair looks... What? I don't know why, but for Phoenix's hair, it, it's different from the game. And the judge, his glorious beard and bald head are gone. Look, they even have stills from the game where Phoenix has his normal hair. Why did they change it? And as much as I like court-related media, it becomes a lot less interesting when you already know how the case goes. They have the music play from the games in the background, and also a separate audio track for Phoenix's inner voice. Weird. Honestly, the musical does a good job at having the same tone as the game. It can be serious and deep and emotional, and also extremely goofy and over the top, just like the games. Ace Attorney works surprisingly well as a musical, probably one of the best choices if you have to base a musical off of a video game. It was clear that they were fans of the games. They put so much love and care into this to make it feel like the games, even when they had to change things for the sake of the show, it still feels like it could have come straight from the games, unlike other people who took elements from the source material but didn't understand what made them so good. I don't like the Portal 2 unauthorized musical. Something that Japan likes to do is make musicals based off of video games. They've done this at least three times, and the second one is Persona 3 The Weird Masquerade. Originally released in four parts over multiple years, it is considered a 2.5D experience. They use a video projection to do things they could never do on stage. Like this. So, Persona 3 is not something I am all too familiar with. My only experience with the game is this video. Oh, Jesus! Shoot me, bitch! I dare you! So I can't say much on the story, but from what I know, it is a dark story. It deals with themes of depression and suicide. Now watch them do a funky dance! It's really off-putting seeing them take a gun to their head and then also sing J-pop. I mean, to be fair, there are Persona dancing games. Those are... S something Since I don't really have much to say about this, I will just say which characters I think would step on me. Wouldn't step on me. Wouldn't step on me. Would step on me. Would totally step on me. Wouldn't step on me. Would step on me. Would step on me. I would want him to step on me. Currently, the only way to watch it is the first part as a fan translation online. But that's better than what we got with the third Japanese video game musical, Persona 5 The Stage. So Persona 5 The Stage works the same as Persona 3 The Weird Masquerade. 
It was, and currently, being released in multiple parts over multiple years, and also a 2.5D experience. Unfortunately, the only way to watch it is a re-upload on YouTube, and unlike the Weird Masquerade, there are no translations. You have to use the Google automatic translation captions, which don't always work. If you don't know the plot beforehand, you cannot follow it. Speaking of plot, it follows the plot of Persona 5, would you believe it? When I was told that, I positively shat myself. And because I played it, I can talk more about the plot and some changes. So when I said it follows the plot of the game a few seconds ago, I actually meant it follows the plot of the game. It starts the same, has the same story beats, it's the plot of the game. Specifically, the first palace of the game. Though it does introduce Yusuke, my boy. If you want to play the game, but was disappointed by the lack of singing and dancing, then sure, try to understand this. I watched through the first part, but the second part is also available. It goes through the second and third palaces of the game. I listened to the songs of it and holy shit, Akechi's song Encounter is so good, holy shit, I love it so much. It actually makes me happy to hear the song. Overdrive, one of Makoto's songs, is also pretty good. I like the dancing. It's really nice and professional, and the performances are all good. Honestly, it's really impressive what they do, because they have to keep in time with the screens. If you mess up singing, if there's a live band, they could always adjust to your mistake you failure, but when it's screens, it can't adjust for anyone you loser, so you always have to be perfect. Joker talks a lot in this. In the game, he's more of a silent protagonist, but still had dialogue options, but in this, he, he can, can talk, talk, he can talk, he can talk, he can talk, he can sing! It's a character that already talked, so it makes sense to make him talk and sing more in the show, unlike in other pieces of media, where they never talk in the original source material, so it wouldn't make sense for them to talk in the musical version. Can you tell that I don't like the Portal 2 musical? The costume designs are very accurate to the games. Everyone looks like their game counterparts, even Shadow Kamashita in his tiny underwear, doing the world a favor or a disservice, depending on how you look at it. Morgana. His costume is my favorite. It puts a smile on my face whenever I see it. Just look at this thing, how can you not love it? When I eventually am taken away from this mortal realm for business reasons, I want this fucking thing to take me out. It actually uses a lot of music from the games, from the more iconic ones to the background music. It's awesome to hear that, and you feel like Leonardo DiCaprio whenever that happens. But the original songs are pretty good too. One of my favorite songs from this is Prince of Detective, sung by Akechi. It has a nice vibe to it. Same with Lady On's song, Endless Labyrinth. It's crazy how when songs are created specifically for emotional high moments, how good they end up being. Unlike when you randomly throw in parody songs at random points, like some other musicals, it sucks so much, oh my god! Despite how good this show is, I can't suggest this if you haven't played the game, because you wouldn't understand anything with the broken ass captions. So those were video game musicals. I hope you enjoyed. Maybe someday I'll take a look at anime musicals, musicals based off of anime. But for now, I live in constant fear of Morgana.